Well, now we come to a very key element in this entire process. And this is something that's really hard for all of us to do, uh, is provide proper evaluation and feedback. And to start with, I kind of wanted just to encourage us, because nobody wants to be given feedback that's not positive. We always want to say, hey, that was great, that was wonderful, that was super. Well, five years later, that, hey, that was great, that was wonderful, that was super, the person's going, well, how come you won't let me do this? Well, you need to fix this, you need to fix this, you need to fix this. But you knew that from the beginning, but you didn't bother telling them. It's, it's hard to do. It's hard to do it well. It's hard to do it graciously. Some people aren't ready for the feedback, but it's going to be important. So let's, let's, at the beginning of looking at the facets of evaluation, let's just think of some of the, the positive things that really come out of it and some of the things that doesn't make it look so odious and so, you know, oppressive. It's actually a very good thing. The Lord gives us plenty of feedback. We need to help each other. So first off, accountability and feedback basically encourages productive development. If you don't know where you need to improve, you don't know where you need to concentrate. You, you might say, yeah, that looks good. That was great for your first class. But now where do I need to improve? Where do I need to learn? And so if I'm given some feedback and a little bit along, it it's, makes it productive in, as I develop because I now can look back and say, hey, I, I've developed, I've developed, I've developed. There's, there, there's, there's goodness going on here. The second thing that we've tried to do in this is make it personalized because there's nothing more discouraging than you walk a guy in and say, okay, you've got to start at your ABCs. And you're like, yes, but I have a PhD in English. Well, nope, our system says you start at ABCs. That's not what we want to do. We want to personalize this so that you can put people in their um, role and with their giftedness right off the bat. Wherever there it's appropriate, let's get them involved. Let's get them engaged instead of saying we, we got to go through this big, long process. Because remember, everybody's going to be at a different level. So the feedback is then going to help them understand where they are and you understand where they are. So that's going to personalize it, and you get to get benefit out of it as quickly as you can. The other thing that's important is setting definable goals. Well, if my opinion is one thing and somebody else's opinion is another thing and somebody else's opinion is another thing, we don't all necessarily have to agree on what our opinion of it is, but at least we ought to say, okay, here's what we, here's what we would be looking for. I might look at it this way, you might look at it this way, but at least we're all looking at the same thing. So we have something that can be... Here's what I'm trying to see, just like what the facilitator is supposed to look like or the presenter is supposed to look like. And I can now consistently apply that. Again, wiggle room, flexibility in it, but I can, I can do it within those defined goals of what I'm trying to achieve. Next, again, is that balance. We talked about that in the opening about biblical understanding, ministerial skills, and personal maturity. We don't want to get somebody so imbalanced that they got their head full of knowledge but know how to apply it, or their head's full of knowledge but they don't know how to use it, or they're really great at working with people but what they're going to be telling them is wrong, or they have both of those things nailed and they're arrogant or prideful. Their character isn't going to match with what you need them to do. So again, the evaluation needs to have that balance to it. So again, that's one of those facets that's important. The other thing is, and, and um, when, when I talk about the... <laughs> The, the, the rubrics or the evaluation criteria we put together, you might go, okay, he's lying in this slide. We want something that is measurable. We wanted something that was quick and repeatable set of evaluation standards. And we wanted to be able to do it so that lots of input could be coming in. Because face it, all of us have our preference. Well, I don't like that guy's style. Or he yells and I like quiet people. If you like yelling people, don't come to me because I'm not going to yell. You're going to have to sit in the front row because I don't talk loud. Uh, so you'd say, eh, that guy can't talk. He can't do anything. But five other people say, hey, that's really great. So you get lots of feedback from different things that it can be done quickly, it can be done efficiently, it can be done repeatably. And again, flexibility within there, but it's something that will then uh, allow that feedback and evaluation system to work effectively. There's nothing worse than having something, okay, I have 973 boxes in this survey when I bought a donut. You know, I, I'm never going to buy a donut from you again because you just surveyed me to death and I, I don't care. Um, so you're, you're not going to want to have a system that it burdens you, but you want to have it that's quick and effective and efficient and repeatable. So again, that's one of the key aspects of this. 
Now, what do you do with all that? Well, I've evaluated it. Well, we have to think about it. We, we want to be able to use it for personal feedback, growth, and development. So maybe even laying out a development plan that would go along there. So what would that look like? What would it look like for somebody to do that? So let's just sort of walk through the, the, that idea. First off, you'd have to say, well, where are you now? A current assessment. Your scriptural understanding, your ministerial role levels, your personal maturity. And you say, that's my best estimate. So then what would be a good thing to do? Well, let's test that. It can't hurt, you know, no harm, no foul. You don't want to say, okay, I've got to evaluate you forever until I'm really, really, really sure. You say, no, I kind of think this is where you are. Here's the qualities, I think. Let's go test it. And so put them in the appropriate environment and put them in the appropriate role. Put them in the appropriate thing for where you think they are and go test it. Give them a couple of shots. Say, all right, let's see where you, where you are, where you line up. And based on that, you're going to develop a plan. Say, okay, here's the areas we need to work on in knowledge and here's some experiential things or here's what we're going to be doing. So I think this is a good thing for you. Uh, and just sort of a development plan. Cause that way people kind of know where they're going, what's to be expected of them. They also then kind of get a little buy-in and commitment. To, well, okay, we're going to do this next. I'm getting ready for it. Maybe I'll do some pre-prep for it. Maybe I'll be thinking and watching and paying attention. So I'm, I'm ready for what, I, what I'm going to be challenged with. And of course, you want to look at any walk areas. In other words, here's some areas that need attention. It doesn't really do anybody any good to say, okay, you've developed all these skills. Oh, by the way, your family's a wreck. Uh, gosh, how long has that been going on? Well, we've seen that for years. Um, you've seen it for years and you haven't bothered telling me about it? I could have been working for years to help straighten things out if you told me. And sometimes that's really hard to do. But we have to be faithful in those areas. So we, again, want to see that whole character development. Okay, so we've evaluated them. So we've tested them out. So we say, all right, this is, this is kind of where we see you. Then we have to create uh, the venue, if you will, the environment. And this is something that a lot of times people forget about is you've got to have the right environment. And we're, we'll talk about that in, in another section. But if you want to develop a guy as a preacher, he has to be able to preach. If you want to have a teacher or a facilitator, they've got to have the environment to work in. So what you want to do is say, okay, here's your role. Here's your environment. We have it all set up for you. And now I want you to practice. I want to monitor you. I want to watch you. I want to see what you're going to do. I want to give you feedback on it so we can sort of walk our way through here. And say we start off with them as a facilitator. All right, that's the intro, intro level. We think they've got the skills and the knowledge and the character to do that. Put him in that role. And then you sit, you evaluate him, you watch him, you see what's going on. And then over time, hopefully, with not just, hey, one lesson, great, you're great, you know, we're going to make you, you know, uh, the preacher next week. Uh, kind of from facilitator to preacher, it's kind of a big leap. Let's, let's watch the guy develop. And then modify the role and the environment as the maturity changes. So as this assessment and this feedback goes on, maybe they move from a facilitator and say, okay, now we're going to try you out as a presenter. And we want to see what you're going to do. And maybe you are going to practice with me to start with. And then we're going to put you in this group. And then we're going to evaluate it. And maybe you're not quite ready for that. We'll put you back as a facilitator for a while. And then, or, hey, you're doing good. Let's start growing in that. And move them on. So, again, you have to start with the role where they are. You have to assess where they are. We have to give them feedback where they are, a plan of where we're going to take them. And then let them learn, let them grow, provide that feedback to them. And over time, it's amazing when people have expectations of here's what is expected of me. This is the information that I need to be able to handle. These are the skills I need to develop. They tend to start thinking about it, focusing on it, and paying attention to it. If you just say, ah, we're going to toss you in a Sunday school kid class with a bunch of four-year-olds, have fun. Um, that's not really motivational. Those kids are tough. Actually, they probably ask tougher questions than adults do. So these are the kinds of things that we want to do as we provide that gracious, loving, helpful feedback to people as part of our evaluation process.